My name is Richard Woods. I'm the Senior Hazards Advisor for Civil Defence and Emergency Management Department at Auckland Council. Cyclones are formed in the tropics, so that's about 10 degrees to um, 30 degrees south, and they're the real breeding zone um, for cyclonic systems that may affect um, Auckland or, or New Zealand. I've got a couple of examples of significant cyclonic events which have affected New Zealand. This is Giselle, and you would more familiar, uh, familiarly know Giselle with the storm that um, sunk the, the Wahine. Um, Giselle moved down and went to the east of the North Island in 1968, and as it moved south, um, with all of these systems, as they move south into colder waters, they lose that hot, humid energy to, that, that um, drives them. So as they come over colder waters, they start to dissipate and lose some of that energy. With Giselle, however, there was a, a quite an active cold front was moving up the bottom of the South Island, and just at about this point ac across um, east, of well east of Wellington, it basically hit Giselle and that wound it up. So it's pushing a whole lot more cold energy, and that um, created the waves that ended up sinking the Wahine. Bowler in March of 1988 um, similarly moved down and then it moved across the top of the North Island. Um, there was quite significant effects from Bowler and I've got a couple of images from that later. And most recently, Tropical Cyclone Wilma. An interesting Tropical Cyclone Wilma was the only tropical cyclone that has ever actually hit New Zealand still in a tropical cyclone state. So when it passed the Northland and Auckland regions in late January of 2011, it was still, uh, still categorised as a tropical cyclone. It was initially forecast to be Category 2 as it went past um, Northland, but it was, it, was, it was just only Category 1. So this is a, an image of tracks and intensities of all tropical storms, and you can basically see the distribution of global circulation on these. There's basically through here, east and southeast, uh, southeast Asia, you can see these systems pushing um, pushing west and then getting caught up in the westerlies up the top here and being pushed off. Similarly, you can see that occurring down here. The westerlies, they've been captured in the westerlies and pushed off, um, and, and similarly up here. Hazards associated with cyclones, um, we've got widespread flooding and the potential for that to be region-wide widespread flooding. We're talking here um, two to 300 millimetres across the region in, in a short period of time, 24 to 36 hours, rather than a localised thunderstorm event um, which may only affect a small community or part of a community. Storm surge hazards, where we get that real low, low pressure coming across associated with those cyclone systems, you get a super elevation of the ocean because you've got less weight, because there's less weight, it's low pressure pushing down on the ocean, you get a super elevation. So, this, so basically a higher tide than you would be expecting. And the high tide for Wilma was somewhere in the order of uh, 24 centimetres, I think, higher. The thing to do with storm surges, 24 centimetres isn't much if you've got a, a high tide that's around king tide height and you add 24 centimetres, it's not that much. But the other component of storm surge is wave run up and wave set up. So you've got a build up of waves, you've got driving winds coming into the coast, you get those waves just build up the, um, the tide height even higher and you get subsequently inundation of low lying areas. Wind damage is, is an obvious factor, particularly as the cyclone gets closer to land. And this is an image from Cyclone Bowler where we had about 917 mils was recorded at Tolaga Bay for that entire event. And that prolonged precipitation induced a lot of land instability and erosion across the Gisborne-Hawke's um, Bay regions.